In this video, I'll discuss the second episode of Game of Thrones season 8 in detail. So stay tuned for that. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ultimate Book Maniacs, your one stop for book and TV series reviews. I post episode reviews, top 10 and theory videos. I'll also post my dead diaries video soon. So make sure to subscribe this channel. And if you want to make sure you never miss a video, click the bell icon to turn on notifications. This episode was just a build up for the battle of Winterfell. We get to see these people spend some time together one last time. These two episodes have left me feeling warm and happy. Like I've said before, David and Dan are trying to give us all these happy moments before they rip our hearts out. Because let's be honest, A lot of these characters are going to die by the time this battle ends. As always, let's begin with the intro. After the last hearth and before Winterfell, you can see the tents raised by Danny's army. They have also dug up a trench and put spikes in the ground all around Winterfell. They were also creating dragonstone studded spikes in Winterfell's courtyard. I thought this was to slow down the White Walkers and Whites. Normal spikes won't stop the whites, but these spikes are studded with dragon glass. But they put normal spikes in the ground. Where do you think these dragon glass spikes would go? Maybe to block the way into Winterfell, or maybe into the crypts. They have also put sharp pointed dragon glass on the battlements. I think it's called merlins, so the whites couldn't scale the wall. Anyway, the episode begins with Jamie's trial. Danny meets the person who has killed her father and she is angry. Brienne vouches for Jamie. She tells them how he had lost his hand trying to protect her and says she trusts him with her life and Sansa declares that he should stay. When Jamie asks Bran why he didn't tell them, Bran says he won't be able to help in this fight if Bran let them murder him first. When Jamie asks what about afterwards, he says How do you know there is an afterword? You know what this means? I think Jamie will not survive this battle. Jamie and Tyrion first meet in the courtyard where people are putting dragon glass in the spikes. Tyrion tells Jamie Cersei told him about the pregnancy and lied about having a new start. He then asks Jamie if she lied about the pregnancy too and Jamie says that part is true. But how can he be sure of it? The only person who told him about the pregnancy was Cersei herself and as I discussed in my last episode's review she was drinking wine which means she wasn't pregnant They later meet in the great hall and discuss how much they have changed Jamie says it's too late for him but Tyrion can still find a whore but Tyrion refuses for self betterment I didn't believe the theory before that Tyrion likes Danny but after this episode Do you think there might be some truth to it or maybe he still considers himself as Sansa's husband probably not Tyrion jokes about going to King's Landing after he is dead and killing Cersei if Jaime dies in this battle that would mean Tyrion could be the Valonqar just like Cersei has suspected all along like i've said before it could be Arya or Euron too but maybe Bran's afterward comment was about the whole war with Cersei What do you think? And who do you think the Valonqar is? Tormund arrives with the information that the Umbers have fallen. He says whoever is not here now is with them. Does that mean Dreadford and Deepfoot Mott, aka House Glover, etc., have fallen too? Tormund tells them the Night King would be here before the sun comes up tomorrow, and they all begin preparations for the battle. At the War Council. John says their best shot is to kill the Night King and Bran offers himself as bait. He says the Night King has hunted down the three-eyed ravens and would come for him too. Theon offers to protect Bran while they wait for the Night King in the Godswood. Why do I feel like Bran won't be much safer with only Theon and a few Ironborn to protect him? I feel like more people should be protecting him, not just Theon. I don't want Bran to die. <laughs> You can see their formation on the map. Danny's army would be in the middle behind two dragons, which is where Jon and Danny would be. 
the Starks would be on the right, probably led by Arya or maybe Tormund, and the Vale would be on the left with Winterfell's army. The left flank will be led by Brienne with Jaime and Pod by her side. Sir Jorah would probably be in the middle along with Grey Worm and the Rothraki. Sir Davos will be on the wall to give the signal to light the trench when the Whites are in range. Those white pieces are supposed to be the army of the dead. It's a good thing they are not underestimating the Night King. After the meeting, Tyrion asks Bran to tell his journey to him. I don't know why, but I feel like this scene was important. I think by listening to Bran's story, Tyrion would figure out something we have all been missing. Or maybe this will give him an idea for some kind of plan to defeat the White Walkers. Because as Danny had pointed out, Tyrion can think better than any other man. Jaime asks Brienne to let him fight under her command. And later, he knights Brienne. You can tell what Brienne feels by how she smiles at Jaime, but not at Tormund. By the way, is it just me? Or was Jaime a little bit jealous of Tormund? <laughs> Maybe it was just me. John is avoiding Danny because he knows the truth. When Danny meets him in the crypts, she says how people said Rhaegar was decent and kind, and yet he raped Lyanna. So John tells her the truth. This is a huge blow for Danny. Ever since she lost her brother, husband, and child, the Iron Throne was the only thing that kept her going. It was like her life's purpose to take back her home and restore her family's legacy. And she finally met a man she thought she could trust and love again, and she delayed her life's purpose for him. But after spending so many years of her life on this goal, she finds out not only she can't have the Iron Throne because there is another male heir alive and she is not a man, but the man for whom she delayed her one and only goal is her nephew. It took her by surprise, and to be fair, it's a lot to take in. I don't think Danny really believes John, because the only person who can vouch for it are his brother and his best friend. She doesn't get much time to process this information, but I'm sure once she has more time, she would be glad that she is not the last Targaryen alive. And I think we have come far enough in this series that John being a male heir won't give him a better claim than Danny. We know the Dothraki and the Unsullied would still follow her, and we would have to wait and see what the Westerosi lords would do. I think an alliance by marriage would be the best option for them, so they could rule together if they survived. And it would also please Sansa and the northern lords, because then a Stark would be a king too. Arya meets Gendry again with the excuse for asking about her weapon. It was sweet that he wanted to send her to the crypts for her safety. It's obvious they both like each other. I can't believe they are the same kids who kept fighting back in season 2. She later finds out that he is Robert's bastard. She says they might die, and this card works better for her than it did for poor Tormund, and she sleeps with Gendry. After Jora convinces Danny to forgive Tyrion, she orders him to wait in the crypts with Killy and Varys. Lyanna refuses Jora when he asks her to go to the crypt. Sam gives Heartsbane to Jorah, so the sword can be used to protect the family he has left. We also see Ghost standing with Sam and John, but I hate that it seems like John doesn't care about him anymore. No more hugging or talking. He didn't even look in Ghost's direction. By the way, I love how when Sam gets angry at John's suggestion to hide in the crypts and starts counting his accomplishments, Stealing the books is right up there with killing White Walkers and surviving the fist of the first man. I also like that David and Dan finally used Dolores Ed's lines from the books. Although, he still wasn't as miserably funny as he was in the books. <laughs> Missandei and Grey Worm meet and plan to go to Nath once the war is over, which obviously means they won't make it till the end. No one makes plans in this series, and then ends up at their destinations. <laughs> Just kidding. In the end, when they are waiting in the great hall, Tyrion asks someone to sing a song, and Pod sings Jenny's song. Now I understand why the ghost of High Heart always wanted to hear it, and I agree with Arya. The song was soft and sad. In season 7, 
The minister said the citadel had mentioned Jenny of old stones and how Jenny claimed her descent from the children of the forest. I still believe that they mentioned Jenny there and now they used her song for a reason. I discussed it in my Is the Night King a Green Seer video. And if you watched my Stark Blood theory and my Brand's Journey video, you know my theory about the Stark's descent from the children of the forest too. I'll put the link to those videos in the descriptions below in case you wanna check them out. This episode has left me feeling warm and happy, which means I might feel the opposite by the end of next week. <laughs> I'm really scared about the battle in the next episode. What did you think about this episode? Anyways, it's time for the comment shout out now. As per the new rule, I'll only give a shout out from my previous video's comments. So make sure to post your theories and thoughts in the comments below. Today's comment shout out goes to Sean Kilaki, who said, Danny's vision in the House of Undying seems to be the most accurate foreshadowing we have been shown. It has Danny going north of the wall, then meeting her husband and child. She sees it as Khal Rogo, but the reality of it is Jon Snow. She sees the Great Hall and the Iron Throne in King's Landing, obviously after a fire and in winter. The throne covered in snow is an allegory to a snow who will sit on the throne. So maybe Cersei acts like the Mad King and burn them all, which then connects with the vision from the House of Undying. Or maybe the dragon's fire sets off an explosion of the wildfire storage jars, causing a chain reaction throughout the city. I like your theory, Sean, and I completely agree with it. We thought Danny going beyond the wall and meeting Drogo and Rego meant that she will die fighting the army of the dead and will be reunited with her dead husband and child. But now, I think you might be right. Danny was so close to the Iron Throne when she decided to go north to save John, who is technically dead and is a fire white. And she lost her child, aka Viserion, beyond the wall. So maybe the House of Undying's vision showed her this vision. Or maybe Rego was meant to be John and Danny's unborn child. What do you think of these theories? Don't forget to tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, share the video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you in my next video.